Hey everybody, this is Dmoney Bala. Today we will be running um, Stable Diffusion on an Intel Arc A750 8GB graphics card. Um, so this is a fresh install of Windows that I've got. I've just got uh, OBS Studio running right now and that's what's using, using a decent amount of my GPU because I'm only running like an i3 so I don't want to do CPU encoding while we're doing all this but it should work fine um, and uh, we should be able to get some images on here um, there's a there's an article that Intel has put out called stable diffusion with PyTorch on Intel Arc GPUs now this one is running it in a Jupyter notebook so that's a little different than automatic 111's um, web UI but it's more of what a lot of data science and Python programmers use um, day to day. So we will do this. We're going to walk through this guy. Um, just to make sure that you have an Intel Arc with the drivers installed. I was, I'm assuming you've got that done. Um, then it says to run, uh, making sure that you've got uh, WSL, which is Windows Subsystem for Linux. I don't have that installed. So if you run this and you don't have it installed, you'll get all of this like use thing. So when you get that, you'll just do WSL dash dash install. Um, and that's going to ask you for supervisor privileges twice. And then you just install that. And we just wait because it's got to download and install. All right, now that that's installed, we can come back here, paste that again. And uh, it, it wants to be rebooted before it'll give us a good answer. So we'll just reboot and I will see you guys after you've rebooted your computers. So once you restart, it's going to prompt you for a new Unix username, and that is for your Ubuntu virtual machine that you're running. Um, so I just put Dmanibala, then you put in your password, and then you will log into your Ubuntu um, machine, and then we'll install Docker Desktop. Once you have the passwords set up, it'll say installation complete, and then you'll get um, a screen with your username at, and then whatever you named your virtual machine. Um, and it's a uh, virtual Linux box inside of your Windows machine. And so that's necessary to have the um, Docker Desktop 2. Once we have that running, we can open up Terminal. We can run WSL-L-V, and we've got Ubuntu running and it's version 2. So that's great. Everything's working. We're okay to move on to the next step, install Docker Desktop. Next step after we've... Um, confirmed that we have WSL2 running. Uh, we're going to install Docker Desktop for Windows. You can just follow this, download this, run the uh, installer once it's finished. And that is how you'll install Docker Desktop. So then it'll prompt you for um, admin privileges to install. Um, just took a long time for it to open when I downloaded it, when I clicked on it. So here we go, we're installing Docker Desktop. You wanna make sure that use WSL2 instead of Hyper-V for your backend is, um, is checked because that's gonna be a lot faster and it's just gonna work better. So then you go and we'll just wait for that to install. And then once that's installed, we need to reboot. Okay, so once it's finished, it's going to say installation succeeded, close and restart. You will do that, and that's how I'll see you guys after you've restarted your machines. So once you have um, rebooted after installing Docker Desktop, then you can do the subscription agreement. This basically just says that you're not a big company, and that's fine. Or if you do, if you are a big company, you got to pay money to use their product, but it's just me. So I'm just going to say, yeah, cool. Then you install Docker Desktop. Um, you can do it without signing in. And then you can just skip this. It's going to start the Docker engine, which is an important part of what we're... This is basically the back end that runs the Docker container that we will use to run Stable Diffusion in our notebook in. So this instruction is basically just saying, make sure that everything's working. 
and that you uh, can see that Docker is running. So we're going to open up our terminal again. We're going to run this. Yeah, we've got version 2 of Docker Desktop and Docker Desktop Data 2 and Ubuntu running. That's great. And we'll just copy and paste Docker run hello world. It's going to pull hello world and run it. Great. So Docker is working. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, make a data directory and that's going to be the volume for our Docker so that it's going to have the same stuff as um, what we've got there. Oh, we're going to need git. Um, I don't think we, I don't think I have git installed since this is a fresh uh, Windows installation. Yeah, so it throws an error because it doesn't understand what git is. So to install git, if you don't have it installed already, you're just going to look uh, git, git for Windows. You can go to downloads and you go to Windows, download for Windows. And it's a 64-bit setup. You click on it. It's going to prompt you for escalation of privilege. Then you just basically hit next through all of these unless there's um, particular setups that you want for it. But I always just click through all of them. And it gives me what I want. I don't do anything crazy fancy with it. Okay, so then you can just hit finish. That's going to take you to the release notes. You can X out of that. Then what we're going to try to do is we will see if this works now. Okay, so it doesn't. Let's relaunch our terminal. You can either use terminal or git. Um, if you relaunch your terminal, you're going to have to cd back to that c data directory that you had. And then do git lfs install. And that's initialized. Um, then you're going to clone this from Hugging Face. And it's a pretty big um, project to clone. So depending on your internet speed and stuff, it may take a while to download all of this. So I'm just going to speed this up in post. <laughs> Okay, so now it's over. It's downloaded 29 gigabytes, uh, I mean 29 gigabits of info. It took a while um, on my connection. So then we're going to go back to here. We've got that uh, installed. Then we can run the Docker container. I don't think if you hit this copy button and paste, it works all the way because it tries to do multiple things. So it kind of just sucks that you have to paste it line by line. Um, but it is what it is, unless there's an easier way of doing this. Nope. Okay. So, just copy it line by line. This ITRM means to remove it once you're done with it. This device means to pass your GPU to it, I believe. Um, I guess this is saying use whistle. This is like saying there's our volume of data, data. And then this just makes sure that your port is bound. And uh, I believe this would be the Docker container registry information pulled from Docker Hub. So you run that, it's going to pull that and install it. And it's not as big as that hugging face model, but um, it should it may take a while if you've got a slower connection. Not as long as the model, but it has to pull all these and then extract them. Um, I wouldn't give it public access, but you give it private access. Um, that's just Windows. Uh, so then once you're in here, you can do this. You're inside of a Linux image. It's a Docker container, so it's like a virtual machine. Um, in your terminal. So here's a command we can run to make sure that uh, your GPU is showing up. Intel graphics, yep, so there we go. We've got a graphics card because my 
CPU doesn't have graphics enabled. So there's our A750. Cool. And then um, we're going to change directory to data. Um, you, I don't think the C works. You just have to do CD data. So there's our model. Um, so you want that you want to be you want to be able to see your model when you run ls. Um, we're going to pip install Jupyter, um, and that's going to allow us to run a Jupyter notebook to interact with the model. It's going to be like something that runs in the web browser, um, where you can run Python code and it'll run. So. If you want to see the output of it, you can get rid of the dash Q. The dash Q means quiet. Um, so quiet as in don't tell me everything you're doing, just do it. And then we're going to run Jupyter Notebook um, allow root with localhost on port 9999. Then it's going to come up here. You run that. Uh, we'll do a new Python 3 kernel. And I'm going to move this over here on this half of the of the screen so we can see stuff. Uh, this is their example. Uh, I, so this is, I guess you could break it up into different cells too. So this will be the install. I guess we'll do install here. Import the stuff, make sure that you have um, Make sure that you see your GPU, um, load the stable diffusion model. This step is going to take a while. Um, you hit this plus to add cells below the current cell. Um, and then you're going to move your model to uh, GPU, do that. And then this is uh, the prompt that you've got. So you're just going to prompt for that. And then you can prompt for this one as well. And we're just going to tidy this up because I'm weird. So that's just going to install diffusers, diffusers and transformers and accelerate. Those are Python packages needed for this. So once that asterisk done, it means the cell's done. So you can just do um, you can either hit this run button or what I do is I just hit control enter and then see how the asterisk pops up. Then it'll tell you there's your GPU again. You click into the next cell, you hit uh, control enter and then that's going to load your stable diffusion pipeline, um, that huge model that we downloaded and it's going to move it to the GPU. So if we pull up task manager, we can see that we're using more and more uh, RAM to move that model into computer's main memory and then that's going to get moved on to our GPU uh, video memory um, once we move it to the XPU I guess that's what uh, Intel is calling it with the one API um, and uh, I'm just look curious to see how big the model is but we've got here I'm just going to show properties is that really 75 gigs it might be C data stable diffusion says that it's a 75 gigabyte model so that's really big um, that's really really big so that's what's taken a while I don't think it loads everything into memory just enough of it because I don't have 75 gigabytes of memory installed so if that's the case, then we're going to crash out here pretty hard. Okay. Cool. Okay, so now that's done running, and we can prompt it for stuff. So this pipe is how you interact with your pipeline. Um, and then it's going to do images, and it'll create one at a time, I believe. And so this if you just leave it at the end of your cell, it'll print it out. Um, so yeah, see, it looks like it's on in our video memory now because we went from 0.6 gigabytes of VRAM to 5.2 gigabytes of VRAM. 
Um, and this first prompt just takes a long time to load everything, but once it starts going, it's actually fairly quick. And there you go, we're using a lot of the GPU, like 80% of it to do the image, and it's gonna display it. And I'm sure this would run faster if I didn't have OBS recording my uh, screen. But yeah, it'll run even with OBS recording what I'm doing. So there's what we prompted it for. Um, let me show you a few other things. You can set a variable to the image. So you can do like this and then um, you can look at that image. And see how the second one would run is a lot faster. I think it just is initializing all those weights. Um, so once you've got it up and running, every other image query that you run should be pretty quick. I'm going to insert another cell below. So if you really liked this cat sitting on a park bench, what you can do with it, uh, you can see what uh, attributes the thing has, um, what I is. I is that image. So you can come here and see that there's a save attribute. So we can come here and do i.save you should do cat.jpg. You can run that, and that should save cat.jpg to that data directory that we made. Um, there's our cat.jpg. And there you go. That's how you can save them. Uh, if you want to keep, if you want to run different things, you can come up here and change this and be like cat eating ice cream on Mars. You can watch your task manager to see how much video me, video memory you're using and how hard you're pushing your graphics card. And there's the cat. I guess there's ice cream there. Let me full screen this. Eh, I guess the cat didn't really work out. We'll get rid of it. Let's try that again. But yeah, you can just play with it, uh, rerun each cell um, if you want to keep prompting it for different things. There you go. There's the ice cream on Mars, but I guess it's not understanding that we want a cat. It's getting ice cream on Mars. So let's just do cat eating ice cream. There you go. So there's your kitty eating ice cream. Um, and yeah, that's how to get stable diffusion up and running on Windows operating system with uh, an Intel Arc GPU. If you found this video useful, hit that like button and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys and have a great day.